Hey guys, how's it going? Um, my name is Mary Tully and I am the owner of a dog training company called Tully's Training that is based in Southern California. Um, it, I'm here with my dog Kai, who's very excited right now. Can you say hi? Can you say hello to everybody in the world? They're all out there. Say hi. <laughs> um, so today I'm here to talk to you guys about some things to look for um, when you're actually looking for a dog to add to your family. So um, all week we've been doing, Kyle Kittleson and myself, we've been doing shows on um, things to think about when you are deciding which dog to add to your family. Um, I hope you saw Kyle's episode that was on Wednesday and I was on Monday. And today we're going to talk about when you actually go to pick out your dog. What should you look for? So um, this is definitely something that as I've gotten more experienced, I've realized how incredibly important it is um, to make sure that you're picking out the right dog in the first place. So it's not so much about just get whatever dog you think is cute or comes over to you first. Um, and then deal kind of with the behavior later. Um, you really want to know what you're getting into from the beginning. So. Um, when you are at a shelter or at a breeder, um, really, you kind of want to start even before you go. You really want to assess kind of, you know, like everything we've been talking about already this week. You want to make sure that you know what type of dog you're looking for. You want to make sure you know what age you're looking for. Um, and you want to really stick to those guns once, once you get to where at, wherever it is that you're going. You don't want to go in and just kind of make a last minute um, you know, kind of heartfelt decision because this is um, a commitment that you know could be lasting you in the next 15 to 16 years. So you really want to go in with a good head on your shoulders, know exactly what you're looking for. Now, um, let's say for example you're looking at a litter of puppies. Um, even you know if you have a specific breed of puppy that you're looking at, so everybody genetically is pretty much the same. You're going to see lots of different personalities within um, that litter and depending upon your experience level with dogs, depending upon your family situation, um, different individuals can be different or a better fit for you and your family than others. So for kind of your average dog owner, somebody that's maybe had dogs before, um, maybe has a little bit of experience but you know doesn't have any professional training or doesn't want a working dog or some you know something like that, you really are kind of looking for the dogs that are the most easygoing. So um, if you see a puppy or even an adult dog that kind of runs to the back um, and kind of hides in a corner, your heart will be screaming at you to take that dog home, but your head should be telling you this might not be the best fit. Um, dogs like that that are extremely fearful really need to be in homes that are really experienced and know what they're doing. And as kind as it might seem to, be, to take that dog into your family because you think nobody else is going to adopt it, um, you actually could end up doing more harm than good because those dogs really need to go into an experienced home um, with people that really have a great education in dog behavior and know how to kind of guide them through that anxiety and, and all of that stuff. Um, on the flip side, you also, if you're kind of the average dog owner and you have a family and you have a job and you know you don't train dogs for a living, um, you probably also don't want to go with kind of the bully of the crew or the most outgoing. The one that you really, really want is kind of the nice guy, the kind of average puppy that plays nice with others. Um, so when I say plays nice with others, if you have a group of dogs, things you're gonna look for are maybe that puppy you know, plays with another puppy and they give each other breaks on a regular basis. Um, what you want to kind of watch for is maybe a puppy that kind of just keeps coming at another puppy and doesn't really stop or give that puppy, um, you know, a breather. If the other puppy kind of yelps or lets them know, hey, like, you're playing a little rough and they don't back off, that's kind of some behavior that you kind of want to think, maybe we're not prepared. Um, those types of dogs do best in kind of homes with, again, people that really have a lot of experience um, and dogs that maybe want to have a job. So um, those aren't going to be probably the best suited for kind of walks with the family and kind of hanging out on a Saturday. So some specific behavior that you're looking for um, from a puppy that is going to be your good a better fit or even an adult dog um, is a dog that um, has kind of similar social skills that you would expect from your average person. So maybe when they approach you, their tail's wagging, um, you know, they're checking you out and they're happy, but they're not 
bowling you over the second you get into their kennel. Um, so kind of a little hesitant, but gets over it really, really fast. Um, you also want to ask a lot of questions. So trust the people who are working with those dogs every single day and go in again with a list of questions that you want to ask those people. So some questions that um, I find are really important are ask, um, you know, how does this dog do on walks? Um, you know, when they see other dogs or if something scares them, like how do they react to that? Um, and you, what you want to hear is like, oh, they're, you know, they're pretty fine on walks. When they see something that makes them nervous, they get over it really fast. Um, you know, they do great. So not so much worried about the pulling, but you're kind of wanting to make sure that they can kind of go with the flow and they can kind of jive with things that are going on in their environment. Um, some other questions that you might want to ask are, how does this dog do with other dogs? Also, how does this dog do with cats? Um, so it's good to know kind of right off the bat if you have a dog who maybe uh, has never been around another dog and if they haven't I would ask that person why not. Um, dog aggression and leash aggression are really really challenging issues to work through. They take a lot of time in many cases professional help and money. So if you're going into that you want to really make sure again you know what you're doing and you know what you're getting yourself into. Um, so for my average family what I want to hear is oh we've thrown this dog in with lots of other dogs or um, you know he gets along really great with his litter mates. So those are some things that you would like to hear. Um, another really great one is how does this dog do when you introduce him to children? Um, and again, if they say, oh, we don't let him meet kids, even if you don't have any kids, that's something you want to inquire about. So, so those are kind of some areas that you really want to make sure you're getting as much information as possible. And again, you're looking for the easygoing, chill dog that can just deal with whatever and that has you know, pretty decent social skills. And just to reiterate, the reason why is because it's not good for anybody if you bring home a dog that's kind of above your skill set. Um, whether you're going to a breeder or you're going into a shelter, you really want to make sure that that dog is a good fit for your family from the beginning because it's not good for your family and it's not good for the dog to um, you know, bring home a dog that maybe you have to return because you realize after you bring them home that you just can't handle it and you're not a good fit for each other. Um, and again, you really want to be careful, especially if you've got kids or elderly people in your home, um, that you're bringing home an animal that not only gets along with the adults in the family, but also that's a good fit for the kids because um, you know those are some things that we see as trainers that can be real problems um, in the end. So, and when in doubt, or even when you're not in doubt, call somebody, call a trainer before you get a dog. Um, this is something that we've been doing. Oh, you would, you think that's a good idea? Oh, bless you. Um, this is something that we've been doing a lot um, in our business lately and we found it to be extremely, extremely helpful. Um, if you don't use a trainer for anything else in your dog's life, have them help you pick out the dog to begin with because if you can make that good fit from the beginning, then everything else is a lot easier and a lot more fun. Um, so that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Next week we are going to be back with three more episodes and we're going to be talking about some um, things that you can do in your first week once you bring your dog home. So um, thank you so much for watching. Please uh, share this video if you like it and uh, keep, keep watching with us guys. Alright, have a wonderful, wonderful day.